Hello, film lovers, and welcome to Real Filmmaking. I'm your host, Corey Tyndall. And in today's episode, we're going to get the ball rolling. We're going to give you the basic, fundamental foundations, the how-tos, Filmmaking 101. Where do I get started? Part of my desire here on the Real Filmmaking channel is to give you guys tips and tricks and uh, information that can help you like equip you to go out and make films you know with what you have right now I'm all about budget filmmaking as you can tell <laughs> it's a fun hobby to get into but a lot of us don't have tons of money just to throw like willy-nilly into uh, you know making films or just even getting started in this hobby and so I, my hope is that this channel can be a resource for you guys like as I journey along with you and learning more about film I can just give you different ideas different thought processes, a different perspective on like how to make a uh, film, especially when it's uh, very indie and you don't have a lot of money. <laughs> when people first look into doing any sort of like kind of independent hobbyist level filmmaking, there's always this weird expectation that you have to drop a ton of money to get a good end result. And just in today's world, you know, even outside of the film industry, the gap between technology that the consumer uses and that the professionals use, like that gap has greatly diminished. People ask me, what type of camera should I buy if I'm getting started? Like, you know, what should I pick up? Like, how much money do I need to spend? And honestly, that all comes down to how much money are you willing to spend? <laughs> And maybe more importantly, how much do you have to spend? When I first started getting into doing filmmaking, a lot of it was just, I was using my phone. And I know some of you guys might laugh and you're like, whatever. But I mean, our phones are so powerful, you know, like what they can do in this day and age. It is possible nowadays to go out and shoot high quality footage through an iPhone or through a, you know, an Android phone and get really good results. There's apps that definitely help optimize that. One of them that I will throw up a pick up on the screen is called Filmic Pro. It lets you control things like exposure and focus and different things like that. You can lock and you can set those things and you can tweak them. And that helps a ton in getting the best out of your smartphone's camera. I know some of you guys are going to be like, that's super vague. I have a smartphone, whatever. Um, I want to buy an actual camera. And Let's talk about that for a little bit because, you know, I do filmmaking. I have gear lying around. I have a lot of gear right in front of me right now. So this is a Canon 5D Mark III. Very fun and fancy. Very expensive, too. The body alone is about $2,500. And then when you tack on buying lenses, that's a couple more hundred dollars. But the video that you're watching right now is actually being shot on a Canon 60D, which is about, uh, you probably find one used for about four or five hundred bucks. And they're nice cameras. If you're really wanting to get like a DSLR camera or a video camera, I would say just starting out, don't spend more than like five hundred bucks. Try to find them used. There's a lot of people who are always like upgrading their gear. And so, you know, you can go on various different sites and get a pretty good deal on a beginning DSLR, a couple extra lenses, and you'll be good to go. But honestly, part of getting into filmmaking is just choosing your weapon and just getting out there and actually filming. The next most important thing, arguably, <laughs> is a computer to edit videos on and, you know, along with that software to edit these videos on. Most of the world either has a Mac or a PC. Um, I have both and both serve me well for video editing. I primarily use the Mac, but I've used the PC for other different video projects. You know, there's tons of expensive software that you can buy. You know, you can buy like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. A really great free option that like kind of just recently showed up in the last year or two is HitFilm Express. There's a full version that you can purchase, but the Express version does a ton of the stuff that you would need just for basic movie making and just learning like the workflow of the system. Uh, it's free to download. I'll put a link in the description. You know, with that setup, most basic computers nowadays can run this software, can run video editing software. There's really no excuse when people are like, oh, I can't get started because I don't have the resources. Well, a lot of them are just kind of at your fingertips and you can go find them for free. Like I said, HitFilm is a really great option. That's the route that I would go. Camera, computer, 
what is the next most important thing when we're making movies? That is probably sound. Sound is, a, sound is a funny one because it's not necessarily what we first think of when we think of movie making. You know, we're like, hey, it's making movies. It's a camera. That's the most important thing. A movie will always be forgiven for poor image and stellar sound quality, but the inverse is not true. Great, fantastic image quality will not be forgiven if the sound is terrible. So if you're watching something that's really compelling and it's interesting, but you can't hear what's going on, you can't hear the dialogue, or there's always like a low hum, like shh, no one wants to listen to that. Most of the time, cheaper DSLR cameras, or even if you're using your phone, they have a microphone on there, but it's really bad. It just sounds like tinny trash. And so you don't want that type of sound in your movies. Um, ideally, you want to get something like um, an audio interface, like this is a Focusrite, or you want to get like a Tascam, like a portable recorder. Um, those will run you about a hundred bucks. And they're good sources to get the audio into your movies. But again, you say, oh, just a minute, Corey, I don't have that much money to go drop on a camera and audio stuff, what do I do? Well, the solution, again, is probably in your pocket, and that is a smartphone. All smartphones have a voice recorder app. The microphone on a smartphone is not necessarily ideal, but it's pretty good when you get it closer to the source. If it becomes the only thing, like, you know, if you're filming and you're, like, seven to eight feet away from your subject, the microphone sounds terrible. When you get it closer to the subject, it sounds pretty decent. So actually all the audio that you're hearing in this video is being recorded on an extra smartphone that I have lying around. And honestly, sometimes if I'm feeling uh, kind of lazy or I don't have time to get my audio interface set up and get like a mic rigged up, I will just use my smartphone. Set it just slightly out of frame, like mine is down here, you turn it on get it close to the subject, good to go. So that is like the easy way to do it, you know, have a camera, you have a dedicated audio source, when you pull those into your editing software, you're gonna get a way better end result than trying to have audio from the camera. You know, eventually as you get down the line, you can invest in like nicer XLR mics, you know, this is a condenser microphone, um, it's, it's a lot better at picking up the nuances and sound. And you know, a condenser microphone works in tandem with an interface, so you can plug it in via an XLR cable. So we talked a lot about gear, we talked about cameras, audio stuff, computer. Storage is another thing. If you're gonna be doing video stuff, you're gonna want to get some storage. Um, if you're using DSLR cameras, SD cards are worth the investment, definitely. You probably want to buy an extra hard drive. Hard drives are pretty dirt cheap. I think you can buy like a terabyte hard drive for like 60 bucks. Sometimes you can find an even better deal. But definitely you want to have extra storage because if you're shooting in HD, which you should be, and if you happen to be shooting in 4K, the video gets very big <laughs> very quickly. So you definitely want to do that. Another basic thing that you're going to want to have, I have my little baby one here that's honestly not that good, is a tripod. You're going to want a tripod for shooting. You don't want shaky video, um, you know, unless that's something you're going for, but that's a whole different thing. But generally, you want to stabilize your camera and have a solid, smooth image the whole time, which helps with the uh, viewing experience for everybody. Tripods are pretty cheap. You can find a decent one for like 30, 40 bucks. And then probably the last thing uh, when you're first getting into filmmaking is have some place where you can collect all your thoughts and notes and stuff. As I have found out getting into filmmaking, there's a lot of different pieces that go into actually shooting something, whether that's like a narrative film or uh, you know, an interview or whatever. There's lots of details. The audio, the lighting, the how you set up the shot, the content, all, all this different stuff. And as you'll find as you get into filmmaking, as you go out to shoot stuff, it's like it's hard to remember that stuff on the fly. There's a lot of stuff going on through your mind, and you're just trying to remember one thing to the next. And so having a list, having all of your focused thoughts someplace, in one place, like in a book like this, is super helpful. So those are just some basic overviews. Like I said, this was... Filmmaking 101, even below that, just how do I get into it? What type of gear do I need? 
What should I do? Again, it is a journey. It is a process. I'm on this journey right now, and I hope to bring you guys more content about like how to to do each of these things, like in specific, like a video on sound and a video more about like actually using the camera and composition and lighting and all these different things like act like the concepts of how to write a story or how to set up characters different things like that because my whole heart on real filmmaking is to go on this filming journey together with you guys i want to empower you guys to take the stuff that's up in your head like the stories that you want to tell and be able to translate them to the screen Thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. It helps a ton. Until next time, grab your phone, grab your camera, grab whatever, and get out there and start shooting some movies.